If you've watched this channel before, you know I'm a huge fan of Pico 8, and I'm a huge fan of retro handhelds. I love gaming, I love programming on the Pico 8, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do this portably, how to make games with Pico 8 on a portable device like this retro handheld. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to take a look at running Pico 8 on a portable retro handheld device like this, but not just running Pico 8 on it, actually making games or programming on this. Now, if you've seen my channel before, then you know that I'm a big fan of Pico 8. I've done several tutorials on how to program with Pico 8, you know, learning how to code using Pico 8, so check those out on the channel if you haven't seen them. Um, but in this video, we're basically going to show you how to set this thing up to create your own little portable game making, programming, coding, you know, all kinds of geeky stuff, a uh, little station. Now, obviously, these things are awesome at playing games. You know, you can play all kinds of retro games on there, and uh, there's plenty of tutorials on how to do that. But in this video, I'm going to specifically show you this Pico 8 and how to program on the go. Now, the first thing to mention is you need to find out what kind of compatibility you have with Pico 8 on these portable devices. Now this one specifically is the Anbernic. This is RG351P. This would also work with the RG351V, which is the same version, but it looks more like a Game Boy. It's a, a vertical version. And that's because this is running an operating system called ArcOS. Now there's a couple different operating systems and a couple different retro handhelds that this works on. But basically, you need to find out if your retro handheld is going to run Pico 8 natively and not kind of emulate Pico 8. Because there's a lot of operating systems that will emulate Pico 8. And I think they use something called Fake 08 um, or Retro 08. I think those are the two that are mostly used. But in this case, this is actually the Raspberry Pi version of the actual Pico 8 program running on this guy right here. So the, the reason why that's important is because it's not just playing a game, it's actually running the entire program. And the entire program of Pico 8 is not just a game player, but it's also a programming device. So it's a fantasy console is what they call it. And it has, you know, the code editor, the sound editor, the sprite editor, all that stuff rolled into it, plus the ability to play. So in this case, like I said, we're running ArcOS. We're running Pico 8 natively in there. And this is going to work for these Android Inc. devices that run ArcOS. All right, so now that we've got the right handheld, we've got the right operating system, we need to get Pico 8 running on here. And I'm going to leave a link in the description below for some instructions from Russ from Retro Game Core. And he put together a great little tutorial on how to get uh, Pico 8 onto this device. Now, it's, it's really easy. It's really just a matter of dragging, like, three files into the right folder. But you do have to go to Pico 8 first. You have to buy... A license for it if you don't have one. It's 15 bucks and it's a lifetime license. It allows you to run it on Raspberry Pi, Windows, Mac, Linux, just about anything. One-time purchase if the 15 bucks is too much for you. I understand that but uh, if you want to get into this Pico 8 programming then it's well worth it. I've been using it for years and it's one of the best investments I've ever made. So check out Pico 8 at their website. See if it's something that you want to get into. Check out Russ's instructions on how to get those three files onto this device. And once you got that, then you'll be sitting right here where I'm at. All right, so let's say you've got it all loaded up and you've got all your different files on here, all your different, you know, emulators on here. And one of them that shows up is going to be Pico 8. If you've copied those three files on there, then you'll be able to load Pico 8. And if you have any cart files loaded on there, then they'll be listed in here. If you don't, then you can grab some of those from the Pico 8 website, or in this case, we're going to make our own. So let's just say I, I load up this FG file here, which is the little Family Geekery intro that I made for our YouTube tutorial series. And you can see it actually booted up, and it starts running it right away. But that's just the game, right? We, we want to see how to program this thing. So to do that, we're going to need a mouse and keyboard. So I've got a portable keyboard here, portable mouse, just a wireless one. It uses one of those 2.4 gigahertz USB receivers, and I'm going to use a USB-C to USB-A adapter, and I'm just going to plug that in right into the USB port up top here. So I've got an OTG, and then I've got the OTG and, and charging port. So I'm just going to plug that right in here, 
and that's basically just going to give my USB keyboard access to this device here. So if everything worked right, I should be able to hit escape and get right to the command line. So here's the command prompt that we can do things like listing all the files in the directory, and you can see those three files that I had on there, or we can go escape and go right into the code. So this is, what, like a three inch screen, three and a half inch screen, I think. And because of the aspect ratio, because Pico 8 runs in a one by one aspect ratio, it's obviously not taking up the entire width of the screen, but we're still, still obviously getting this, the entire height. Now, from where I'm sitting, you know, pretty close to this thing, actually like, like sitting at a desk away from it, I can read all that just fine. Um, it is smaller than, obviously, if it was sitting on a nice 27-inch, you know, HD monitor, but I can still read it. And you can see I've got access to my keyboard. You can see I move my cursor around here, and I can actually start typing in here and start coding. It also gives me access to the cursor. So using the little portable mouse here also, it's got access to the cursor or to the, the mouse. So I can go ahead and move the cursor around or move the screen around. And then I also have access to the hotkeys like control R to run or control Q to quit. So all this is running right here, just like a tiny little computer with my mouse and keyboard and a tiny little screen. So if I was sitting maybe on a flight or sitting in a cafe or something and I didn't have a full laptop with me, I could definitely pull this out, prop it up on some books, have a, a portable mouse and keyboard, and this is actually, you know, like a full-size portable keyboard here. You could have one of the small keyboards, you could have one of the tiny little, like, media remote keyboards that's almost the same size as this. Now, it'd be like typing on a Blackberry. I wouldn't uh, want to do that for very long. But you could have some kind of a portable keyboard and mouse with you and just start coding away. Now the next logical step from this would be to also have some way of outputting the video maybe to a portable monitor or to a desktop monitor. And there are some of these retro handhelds that have an HDMI out, but I don't personally have one that has both the HDMI out and the ability to run Pico 8, you know, natively. I do have some that will run out to an external monitor that will emulate Pico 8 games, and that's that's fine. But to actually get into the full Pico 8 version, I don't have one personally. I'd have to check to see which ones would actually work with that. Now, if that was the case, then that would be kind of nifty. You'd have this little tiny thing running as a computer. You'd have your mouse and keyboard. You'd have a portable monitor. You'd basically have a tiny little computer that you could use on the go. Now, at that point... By the time you get a portable keyboard and a portable monitor and you have this thing powered up, you know, it might as well just have a, a small Chromebook or a small uh, laptop at that point. But it's still kind of nifty to be able to do it all right from this portable little device. So to kind of recap everything, find the right device, find the right operating system for that device, buy the Pico 8, load it onto that device, and then you're good to go. Have yourself a little method of plugging in your mouse and keyboard. It doesn't have to be wireless. You could actually plug in a USB dock into here and then plug in a real mouse and keyboard. But for simplicity's sake, having a tiny little dongle like this with a tiny little receiver like that, going to whatever mouse and keyboard combo you want um, is, is pretty darn convenient. So that's basically it for this video. I just wanted to show you guys just to think outside the box when you're using Pico 8 and using these retro handhelds. Play all the games that you want on here, but Take some time to learn also. Pico 8 is a great programming language, a great uh, fantasy console, easy to get into. Watch a couple of my tutorials, see what you can do just in a few minutes, and then uh, you know use this as a stepping stone to learn how to code and learn how to make games and you know just have fun with it. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I appreciate that thumbs up. If you want to see more, go ahead and hit subscribe or check out some of those other playlists I have. And thank you as always for watching. Until next time, peace out and geek out.